Welcome and thank you for participating in this, the third webinar of our Geothermal Industrial Parks in East Africa series. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and all participants are muted with their video turned off. My name is Derek Burke. I am a Senior Program Coordinator at the United States Energy Association. I work on the U United States East Africa Geothermal Partnership. To give a brief background on USCA, we are a nonprofit membership association of public and private energy related organizations, corporations, government, and government agencies. USCA represents the broad interests of the US energy sector by increasing the understanding of energy issues, both domestically and internationally, through capacity building activities and events like this one. If you would like to learn more about USCA and our work, I welcome you to go to our website at www.usea.org. Uh, we would like to thank our members and partners for their support in the energy sector during this difficult time. Each of us have felt the effects of the global pandemic and we continue to work together to recover and come out stronger in the end. Uh, today, we are, we'll have a presentation uh, with two presenters from Iceland that will use uh, the Icelandic example to explain how geothermal industrial parks in East Africa can increase business uh, business and economic and environmental competitiveness. And uh, they will talk about how to attract tenants to propose geothermal industrial parks. Um, therefore, I'm happy to introduce uh, the two returning speakers who spoke at our first webinar for today's webinar, Mr. Jan Janssen, who currently serves as the Ethiopia country manager for Reykjavik Geothermal and Mr. Sigurd Markusson, who works as the business development manager for Landrifken, the national power company of Iceland. <clears throat> we will begin with a presentation by our speakers and then move to a Q&A session. If you have a question, please use the chat and Q&A button below to submit your questions. You can submit them uh, during all the way through the presentations. We will just collect them at the end. Um, and we will ask the presenters to respond once they are finished. Uh, with that introduction, I would like to commence the third webinar, Business Opportunities for Geothermal Industrial Parks in East Africa. I now hand it off to Jan and Sigurd. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for that introduction. And we are happy to be here with you. Let me start by sharing my screen here. Does that, does everybody see my screen here, I guess? Uh, yes, we can see. Yes, it. during this uh, third webinar, we would like to look into more details on uh, the uh, attractiveness of the geothermal eco-industrial park concept, as well as uh, some local attractiveness um, and strengths that can be projected through the, the, the eco-industrial park model. Um, well, you mentioned earlier that the global pandemic is, is, is uh, affecting us all and uh, it has um, moved us forward to a uh, broader way of thinking towards all kinds of exports and imports. Uh, here in Iceland, the global pandemic is uh, being affected. Uh, we are a small island and, and therefore uh, some of the import uh, materials and exports are, uh, um, uh, are now difficult in, in getting due to the uh, reduction in, in, in flights and other uh, communication that we were used to. Um, but uh, the fight continues and, 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 and we will see a different world emerging from that once we have uh, managed the, 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 the crisis. But we want to, today we want to uh, highlight uh, the movement from the typical geothermal power plants to uh, the geothermal eco-industrial park. As we mentioned um, last time, uh, Geothermal has some of uh, uh, advantages over other renewable energies. Uh, it is low cost uh, base load power with a relatively small geographic footprint uh, compared to wind and, and solar and, and hydro. Uh, but what we are focusing on and have been focusing on in these um, webinars is kind of the multiple revenue streams and the uh, the, the uh, high offshoot industry potential. 
And uh, the typical geothermal uh, power plant in the world today is, is uh, usually through these three types, either the dry steam cycle, the flash steam cycle and the binary cycle, which are uh, the, the flash steam cycle is, is then the, the most common uh, one that is, is implemented out in the world. But uh, the common factor with the three uh, approaches that is most generally used is that there's only one revenue stream and that is the sale of electricity. So uh, a lot of the geothermal power plants that we have currently operating in the world uh, only uh, are only supported by this single revenue stream. Um, if you use the, uh, the geothermal eco-industrial uh, park model, then uh, bringing in the approach that you are using the resource in, at the most efficient way, then yes, you have the dispatchable electricity revenue stream, you have the hot water uh, revenue stream, potable water revenue stream, steam revenue stream, uh, mineral extraction such as silica and lithium, and other minerals that you can extract, uh, CO2 that you can sell, energy tourism uh, in Iceland. Uh, we have over 100,000 visitors annually visiting the Hattlesheide power plant. Um, and the Africa specific is probably the 100% availability that a geothermal eco-industrial park can provide its tenants. Uh, it is not uncommon in, 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 in uh, at least in East Africa and, uh, that there are grid problems that create instability in the grid and therefore a, a, a use of a alternative energy resource, uh, diesel generator or, or, or something like that, that King's kicks in is, 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 is very frequently used. Um, just to give an example of what values can be looked at. I have kind of um, brought together some of the uh, commercial values that Iceland uh, has. Uh, you have a, 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 an electricity sale, which is maybe around 70 US dollars per megawatt hour. Then you have uh, the selling of hot water, which is a uh, dollar per cubic meter and, and, and the potable water is probably the same. Uh, steam. Uh, this, of course, replaces, uh, at least in East Africa, which most of the steam is generated through uh, fossil fuel based. Uh, and this is the replacement. So I'm not sure uh, of the commercial value as, as such, but it's, 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 it should be quite substantial. Uh, the sale of min minerals extracted from the brine is still at its infancy, but uh, the price of silica and lithium are in the hundreds of, of uh, up to the thousands of US dollars per ton. So that could be a, a significant uh, uh, revenue stream. And uh, even in the US, we are now looking at um, lithia, lithium extraction companies that are actually basing their business models uh, just on the extraction of lithium. CO2, which uh, uh, is, it has the ability to increase crop and industry and food production can be sold in Iceland to as much as a, a $140 per ton. Energy tourism um, uh, per visitor is, as I, I mentioned earlier, is quite uh, uh, regular here in Iceland. And then you have the, the availability, which I'm not able to, to price as such. But uh, I assume um, taking example from the uh, East African brand that a, um, a reduction uh, of, or if you could reduce uh, the use of, of um, reserve power, then that would be a significant boost to your industry. Um, the uh, uh, renewable energy cert certificates is also something that provides uh, commercial value and um, uh, is, is, is known in, in, Africa, in, in Europe, but is now gradually increasing in Africa. 
Um, the social value, of course, of having a, a, a uh, geothermal eco-industrial park in the local region is, is uh, all kinds of, of uh, direct uh, improvements such as uh, the use for heating and bathing or, or access to electricity, uh, irrigation, um, the CO2 could increase crop production and creating jobs, etc., etc. In addition to these uh, revenue streams, a key tenant in a in a uh, uh, geothermal eco industrial park such as the the power plant could uh, have additional uh, revenues from the lease of land. Uh, uh, a mutual waste management of all the tenants, uh, logistics such as transport to and forth, uh, uh, housing or, 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 or uh, cantinas, food supplies, even uh, financial services or, or, or something like that. Um, a, a, an additional revenue could also be a direct uh, revenues from the uh, tenants of the uh, eco-industrial park. Um, the building blocks of, of uh, geothermal eco-industrial parks, at least in Iceland, are uh, they're usually a high tech. Uh, there's a lot of uh, creative thinking, R&D happening. And, and even though we have kind of a, 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 a broad uh, uh, background in the, in the geothermal uh, power plant, there is uh, innovative centers, there are, are uh, 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 research and de development and PhD students that are working alongside uh, the, the uh, tenants in the geothermal eco-industrial park. Um, so if you would uh, take the uh, concept and place it into uh, an East, East African content, then you would have the uh, revenue streams that I initially told, giving it the uh, the thought of, of uh, R&D and creation, you can have uh, a local benefits that would be uh, local grid stability, an increase in industry. Uh, you know, some of the steams could go into the cement or drying of produce, pasteurization, hot and cold water uh, into greenhouses, or refrigeration, tourism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, the potential impact of these industries to a local community are substantial. This is what happened in Reykjanes. Uh, this is Reykjanes Peninsula, a uh, part of, of uh, south of Iceland. You can see there uh, the capital region of, uh, of Iceland is there uh, up in the uh, right corner, but um, the kind of uh, the, the main part here is is the uh, Reykjanes Peninsula, and after the establishment of the uh, uh, the resource park in uh, Reykjanes, uh, several um, impacts were made to the local community. Um, there were more jobs, higher paying jobs new housing, healthcare improvements, infrastructure improvement, education and training on the social side. On the commercial side, there were new investments, startups and innovation, a generation of export, generation of foreign currency, increased tax revenues and increased environmental consciousness. And even though uh, during this time, Iceland has gone through a recession as the world did in, 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 in the aftermath of the big financial crisis in 2008, um, the area around the um, geothermal resource park was actually uh, uh, much better in, in much better shape than the rest of the country to, uh, uh, to with, withstand this, imp, this, this uh, financial crisis that came in. And you can see that the regional cumulative GDP from after the financial crisis until 2016, that the gray column representing the area that I just showed you has a uh, uh, cumulative GDP of 
uh, 18%, even though uh, 2008 and 9 were actually recession years with, with uh, uh, up to uh, 5% uh, recession in both years. So you can see that the impact of a geothermal eco-industrial park has an enormous impact on, on, on the local communities. Um, the geothermal eco-industrial park can also be as a main sustainability driver. And uh, as such, uh, the, we are all striving towards the, uh, the reaching the, the UN sustainability development goals and, and uh, geothermal uh, eco-industrial parks have a strong focus on innovation, strong focus on, 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 on clean energy, clean uh, climate, et cetera, et cetera. And I actually did a, a, a kind of a thought process where I went through the, the uh, 17 SDGs and I tried to uh, compare the synergies of a geothermal eco-industrial parks on the SDGs. And I actually found out that um, all of the um, all of the uh, SDGs can be mapped in some way by a geothermal eco-industrial park. Uh, a geothermal industrial parks has impact on poverty. It it in it uh, employs uh, local population. It has uh, an, an in increased level of of quality education. Uh, uh, available clean water. Uh, is, is, is uh, a byproduct from the geothermal eco-industrial park. Um, the infrastructure improvements, uh, responsible use of resources, uh, even life below aquatic waters, because one of the main produce here in Iceland that uses the uh, geothermal um, uh, uh, products is the fish farming industry. So, over and all, uh, a geothermal eco-industrial park has uh, a huge impact in the local uh, or the national ability of, of, of working towards the, uh, the SDGs. And of course, when the resource is available, any government that is seriously committed towards the, the, the sustainable development goals and sustainable industrialization should consider uh, a geothermal eco-industrial park as part of the national park plan. Um, so I, I feel very strongly about this. The geothermal eco-industrial park is a set of a system thinking where the, uh, the process of developing a geothermal eco-industrial park, you, you, you have to look and take all parts that are, are surrounding the geothermal eco-industrial park. It's, it's, it's almost like um, having a obesity and, and, and trying to uh, fight obesity with uh, additional exercise without removing the fast food chains and the commercials. So a system thinking requires you to think um, not just at the inputs and outputs, but all uh, inputs and outputs that, that affect this. So it's, it's a system of, of related components that you have to think of as a whole rather than uh, uh, just uh, extracting resource, generating electricity. Uh, what's the benefit for the, for the stakeholders? How can a geothermal eco-industrial park uh, benefit the customers, the community, the lenders, the employees and owners and society. So that's kind of the, the system thinking that is needed for the geothermal eco-industrial park to flourish. Um, as we mentioned in our, our, our earlier segment, the, the circular economy is a very big part of the system thinking and the geothermal eco-industrial park. And, and the, the, the core of the, the uh, circular economy is the closeness to the different, uh, different industries that share the premises of the, of the land. 
uh, and of course, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the, the, the geothermal eco-industrial park works towards a circular economy without any waste. But there is a problem. Um, according to McKinsey, 80% of projects that are under consideration in Africa never go past the feasibility business plan and obtaining approvals uh, in, uh, with uh, stakeholder engagement. There is an 80% drop from, uh, from the, between these two stages and a further 10% drop in project uh, just to reach financial close. And I believe that one of the main reasons of uh, the 80% drop is that these projects are often not uh, working with the local communities. So uh, when we are developing uh, projects in, in Ethiopia, we often get questions that, you know, what is the benefit for the local community? What is the benefit for the, for, for the country? Why are, why, 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 uh, you know, what, what, does, what does it, what impact does it leave behind? And, and I believe that, that uh, this 80% drop, uh, which is around the obtaining and approvals of stakeholder engagement, is due to the fact that there is, uh, it has to be a win-win situation. It has to be a win-win situation for the developer and the local community, because the, the local community is, is providing access to land and, and, and that they have cultivated and grown. And th these are the things that we have seen. And I showed this uh, uh, slide last time that we were together, but it's just so much, uh, it has such an impact. Uh, and these are all far farmers. We we're working in farmland and, and, and we need to be able to have a win-win uh, between the geothermal eco-industrial park and the, and the local communities. Um, so what are the kind of most common uh, ways of operating and managing these geothermal eco-industrial parks. So the uh, ownership is usually in four uh, separate uh, approaches. You have the associative management model, which is the model where the tenants of the geothermal eco-industrial park form a union or a, 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 an SPV, and that union uh, leases the land and operates the, the geothermal eco-industrial park. You can also have a government management model where the government uh, clears the grounds and sets up the, 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 uh, the park and then invites others to, uh, to become tenants in that park. Uh, usually that then they, they either have a, a outsource the management or they, they have representatives in the board that manage that. You have the public private management model where you have uh, 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 regional or, or national uh, governments uh, and then private investors running the, 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 the uh, geothermal impact, uh, the, the geothermal eco-industrial park together. Or you have uh, a private company or individual that is operating the, 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 the park. And, and I would say for uh, my experience, I think the, the model that is most successful or should uh, probably work the best in East Africa is the private pub public uh, uh, management model as you're able to attract uh, a much wider uh, funding into a public-private management model rather than a, uh, a government model or a private model like this. Um, so what's the benefits for the, the tenants that choose to come into this, uh, this uh, park concept? Well, as we mentioned earlier, uh, maintenance, logistics, maintenance of infrastructure, transport uh, between uh, towns and the and the, and the park um, 
for example, uh, if, if there was a geothermal eco-industrial park outside uh, Addis, there might be some buses from Addis uh, Ababa to the geothermal eco-industrial park that would be shared. Uh, IT support, marketing and communication of the services provided, uh, human resources training, occupational health and safety, uh, environmental social government governance, um, financial administration, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and this is something that the management would take care of and, and provide to uh, these different uh, entities that would um, uh, become tenants. The funding, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can have a variety of funding: there is local funding, private funding government subsidies on, on import or, or export or tax holidays or something like that. Um, the new buzzword, of course, or not the new, but uh, is the green financing through, through all kinds of uh, uh, green bonds or, or, or bonds related to the sustainable development goals or su sustainable uh, energy, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, global infrastructure fund, uh, the development finance institutions or the multilateral finance institutions. So there is a, a big vary and there's a huge interest in um, investing in Africa. There's a huge interest in investing in, in, in green energy and, uh, and uh, industrial park concept. I mean, the trend is, is, is going upwards. Um, for our projects in Ethiopia, we have had uh, success in, in, in funding our projects and, and, uh, and we have attracted millions of dollars into our projects, uh, mostly through uh, um, infrastructure funds or, or, or early uh, development funds. Uh, but obviously uh, when we get into later, the, 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 uh, the DFIs and MFIs would, would join. Um, Landsvirkjun, uh, a local utility in Iceland, has um, just received uh, a uh, sustainably linked uh, bond for 150 million. The interest for the 150 million was actually five to six fold when they um, advertised the bond. So that was very promising. The same thing is, is uh, the government of Mexico that also had a, uh, a surplus of interest in their almost $1 billion uh, uh, sustainable development goal bond issue. And that's bonds that are directly linked to the, um, uh, the um, targets uh, related to the sustainable development goals. So if they are able to reach their targets, then the interest rates go down, or if they're, uh, you know, they're so so they're directly linked to the SDGs. Um, one of the things that I mentioned earlier was that the uh, marketing and branding would be a, a shared uh, cost. Uh, marketing and branding is a, it's 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 uh, it's currently being uh, uh, it's it's been raised a lot of awareness in the customer for uh, eco brands or sustainable brands or, or, or consumers are getting very environmentally conscious. So which they're kind of uh, dragging the, 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 the uh, companies away from a, the old way of producing uh, products to a more sustainable use by their selection. People are, are selecting more brands which are eco-friendly or, 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 or marketed in a, in a green way or, or green marketing. And, and as, as, as such, the kind of the, the future of, of um, a produce, whether that is producing coffee or, or tea or clothing, it's, 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 there is a broader uh, consci consciousness evolving, allowing for businesses that are a part of a sustainable or eco-friendly uh, geothermal eco-industrial park to provide a, a, an increased value to their products that they're selling in the market. A lot of certification is available. Uh, 
four brands that are 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 uh, produced in that way. You have the the, the certified sustainable seafood. You have uh, uh, good farming, uh, fair trade uh, of of all kinds of of of, uh, of uh, produce, coffee, tea, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and the UTS uh, uh, certification uh, that provides a certification to products that are uh, providing better living conditions. Uh, providing higher salaries, gender equality, uh, promoting uh, uh, better uh, uh, farming standards, uh, then they are la uh, labeled, the products are labeled with this certification. And then once the consumer is in the store, he can then choose between a product that has been certified and provides them with the certainty that the uh, the farmer has been uh, been been uh, paid at an adequate wages versus another product which is not certified and maybe supports or 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 is involved in child labor. Um, but so how can we attract the tenants? Well, according to Michael Porter, the cluster theory is kind of the basis also of the of the geothermal eco industrial park. It's it's similar to. Hollywood or Nollywood or the Silicon Valley, where you have um, uh, a, an area that attracts um, uh, different industries and, and you have kind of a boiling pot of, 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 uh, of research and development. And, and so, so the, the idea of, 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 of bringing together towards a, a single uh, energy or resource is kind of the same mindset as the as the Silicon Valley or or or, or Hollywood or 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 something like that. So this is the uh, cluster proposition, and I've gone through this earlier. Um, you have supportive uh, education, technologies, business network, capital. You know, providing the scale that is needed providing the economics of scope that is needed to have something flourishing like this. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, the, the geothermal eco-industrial business opportunities should be built on the local strength and trade. And, and the local strengths and trades in the rift are farming, are agriculture projects. So, this is what what are the strengths and 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 the local opportunities uh, of the East African Rift. And um, to go into more details on the uh, strengths and opportunities within the farming and, and agriculture sector, I'm going to hand the word over now to Sigurdur, um, who is going to go into a little bit more details in that. So. Sigurður, um, handing it over to you. Thank you, Jon. And yeah, it's 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 my belief that that geothermal energy and and food production is, are a really nice and good mix that work really well together, and and that we will see in the future uh, more of these two fields combining. As, as geothermal can have additional benefits to, to the food industry compared to, for example, solar or, or wind. And, and if we look at the price variability with, with uh, f food, it can be mostly explained with uh, just fluctuating price of, of energy. And so the, the, the energy cost and the food cost are, are highly interrelated. And, and this gives you an example of how important to the to food production and then to the global food market the energy is. And, and I think that the overall uh, energy use of, the, of our food system is somewhere around 30% of the, of the total energy used globally. And the global food system is, is huge and it has uh, probably hundreds of thousands or millions of products that 
uh, and behind most of them are energy intensive processes. It has been so, so uh, common in the discussion of how to use geothermal energy that, that people start to think right away about tomatoes and cucumbers or, or something, the most simple processes. But, but I think the opportunity with, with food production is, is even greater when we look at, at uh, products that require even more processing and, and more energy. And, but if you look a little bit at the global food system and, and the food system is, it's the biggest industry on earth and it's responsible for 25 to 30% of the global greenhouse gas release and uses 70% of, of the water uh, that we withdraw from the, from the groundwater systems. And, and we could say uh, that in a way that the global food system has taken over a big part of, of the globe. Uh, we have changed so much of, of our nature to, to zones for producing food. And, and this is becoming very, very uh, big, highly debated now in, in the global community because of, especially when, of de because of deforestation and, and how for the food industry is becoming kind of the, the, one of the driving forces behind some of the, our big challenges that we are, we are dealing with. And one of these big challenges as well, if we, uh, greenhouse gas maybe aside, is, is, the, is the decline of, of, of the bio system and, and, and we're losing biodiversity rapidly. And we are seeing uh, the wildlife globally and, and both mammals and plant life decreasing very rapidly. And I think what we will see in the coming years and decade is that food production will be a much bigger part of our sustainability debate. We will see that probably uh, food production and the food system will be on pair with our discussion and, and efforts against, uh, against climate change. And I think the role of geothermal energy here could be very big. And now we are looking for the next three decades that we have to produce uh, as much food as we have done for the past 8,000 years. And, and until, until 2050, when we will see growth in a, in a global population and the population is getting richer, we will see we have to increase food production by 50 to 70%. And energy consumption has to double. And we also have to change our energy system to renewable energy at the same time. And we have to decrease our water use at the same time. And, and this is very important for, for East Africa because currently the, the countries there are net importer uh, of importers of, of food. And with an with a increasing focus on food security and, and so on, that, that I think that the, the countries that have geothermal resources should really use the system thinking that Jon was talking about to, to look at the opportunities they have with, with the geothermal resources and couple it with, with their opportunities in food production. And, and as I was saying, the food system is changing with pressure from sustainability, food security, climate risk, and, and also big depression coming from the customers on, on all sorts of, of issues with food production, as I talked about, biodiversity, CO2 footprint, uh, traceability, and, and so on. And, and if we look at this, what, what role can geothermal play in this change? Uh, if we look at what has happened in the seafood industry for the past uh, 60 years, we had a steady increase in fisheries all over the world for, uh, from 1960 to 1990. And then from 1990 until now, there hasn't been almost, any, it's been a, been a steady state in a way. And this happened quite, quite rapidly. 
and what happened at the same time, we had we had you know, the cost was going up, the environmental pressure was growing. We had a policy change in many countries where they introduced quota systems and and increased their the control over fisheries. But the seafood production kept rising, but it happened in controlled environments in aquaculture, where where you 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 where you control your system. And I think the same thing will happen in agricultural land, where we will try to tackle the sustainability issues and, and energy issues with food production by controlling more the environment and using more technology to produce our food. And in a way, what we have done in the past is we have just taken more land under food production to get more surface against the sun, to get more energy from the sun to, to produce. But, but we could also use geothermal energy in that sense to create, in a way, artificial systems. And, and the connection between food and energy and water is, is, a, is really a growing, growing field. And, and I think the driver of, of for the next decades will be to to go from producing food in the natural environment and especially the increased food we have to produce is is to more control our environment where we produce the food use external energy in controlled system where we can optimize the processes and by that way we can much more control the risk we can control the output of the process production and we can much more put in 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 use technology for automation and so on and and for for geothermal energy you know this food production is is i at least in my opinion is per, it's a perfect match you know you keep on continuing to sell your electricity to the grid but you can also increase your revenues by selling additional revenue streams to bio-based industries because bio-based industries they need energy they need co2 for their production to grow they need water chemicals and then for post production of the of the products you grow you also need similar resources an example of this could be if i take one plant for example just the peppermint plant where you can grow very well almost anywhere and then you can with with post processing where you can use steam and 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 energy you can process them into much more valuable products which which could uh, which makes the location maybe not as reliant on on transport so you you're you can eat much more easily transport it to different markets and you're concentrating trading the product in 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 much more valuable uh, product and i could take you know i use the peppermint here as as an example but you could could do this similar with with thousands of different plants or 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 products that you grow and the processes that could be driven on geothermal are are you know drying freeze drying extraction processes boiling uh, and, and so on. Most of the food related uh, processes are, are need heat, they need thermal energy to drive the processes. And this is, I think, what geothermal can provide the food industry, which, which uh, for example, solar and wind uh, cannot as well provide. And, and this is where you can really look at your local industries local agriculture and and really map out you know what is the biggest uh, industries locally what what increased value could be made from local agriculture from drying local agriculture products or freeze drying or somehow increase value with processing within the this eco industrial park but the, here i think the, the the opportunities are are almost endless and and innovation will keep driving this adoption to to kind of climate neutral food system and we see examples from 
this example, for example, uh, from uh, New York, where the company Aero Farms have created vertical farming with uh, where they're producing uh, green uh, for plants, for example, lettuce or, or kale or or, or 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 spices, and they they talk about where they almost have been able to increase the output from each square meter 400 times. And, and this is of course, example of where you use technology automation and, and a lot of energy to, to uh, optimize your production. And algae production, for example, is, is another, another opportunity which we are seeing growing interest within the geothermal community to, to, to attract such production as a, as a part of 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 uh, such parks, and but it also can be on on smaller scale and smaller solutions that could support uh, local consumption and 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 create kind of more increased food security and really resilience of of local communities. And fish farming is another example which we are seeing see. Uh, that is a, is a good pair with geothermal uh, operation. So overall, I think that the food, future food system trends uh, fit very well to geothermal industrial park and 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 geothermal this this sharing of of uh, infrastructure, sharing of of maybe processes and, and sharing of facilities that could. They could process food and and as I could create a lot of opportunities for the food industry to to become a part of of such industrial community and the competitiveness of geothermal energy for for food production is now very good uh, and because the thermal energy you can get from geothermal using directly thermal energy and this example I we made for Iceland and we could just calculate the cost of heating up four hectare greenhouse in few European countries compared to Iceland. And the cost of doing it directly with geothermal energy in Iceland compared to natural gas in the Netherlands is, is just a fraction. And of course, there are other factors that count in such as labor cost, but, but this gives you an indication of, of how the competitiveness of geothermal, especially when, when I guess with, with increased automation in, in greenhouses where, and the cost of energy becoming bigger and bigger part of the operational cost, this might, might, might uh, give geothermal even more uh, attractiveness to, to the food industry. And, and when, the, the, when fossil fuel will be phased out in, in some of the greenhouses, as we would probably see happen in, in European countries over the next decade. And some of the, some of the pr producers have to use, start to use uh, energy, electrical energy from the grid, for example, uh, the cost difference will become even more. And an example of where, where these processes have been uh, uh, utilized to a scale is, for example, Mokai in, in New Zealand, where next to the Mokai power plant, where they have built a 11 hectare greenhouse and a big milk drying uh, processing plant, where they, where they process over 250 million liters of milk annually and to produce milk powder for export. And Another example is, is the company Vaxa at, at Hetlisheide, where they are using uh, Hetlisheide in Iceland, where they're using CO2 and electricity from the power plant to, to grow algae. Uh, and algae can be grown to, to produce uh, uh, very nutritious uh, uh, meal that can be, can be uh, added to, to feed, for example, you can do it Use it for cosmetics or 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 minerals or or, or food subsidies. So th this is this is really a growing industry, and and I could I could give you exam endless examples of where 
thermal energy is used for food production. And especially where you can increase the volubility of locally made food and create food for that has has increased storage capacity, has has maybe higher value per per weight, so you can easy, more easily transport it. And and I think this will probably become one of the one of the great opportunities for further developing geothermal is, is to to look into what is happening in the global food system and and couple the opportunities together. And but we have to think about how we can, you know, share infrastructure, give for companies, farmers access to, you know, for example, drying facilities, freeze drying, uh, and all sorts of equipment that can, can be a part of such industrial parks. And we have to work with local research institutes and universities to develop new opportunities. We have to encourage local innovation and 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 innovators to to work with farmers and energy companies to find out the opportunities so we can increase the value with, with, with uh, such, such processes. But this was my final slide. So uh, so okay. I think. Yeah, thank you very much, Sigur. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, cut you off there. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, both of you, for that uh, presentation. Uh, I want to remind everybody so that you can uh, submit your questions in the chat box below. Uh, we do have two questions right now that I, I will uh, ask uh, Jan and Sigurder here. So uh, this is from Mike Long. Uh, I think I know why Mike is uh, asking this question. We worked on uh, the Osirian project together. Uh, for your industrial parks, what do you use for emergency backup power supply to cover periods of shutdown which may include major maintenance or unplanned outages. And uh, how do you guarantee the re reliability to your tenants who may need high availability factor uh, energy? Yeah. I think for uh, the way I see it is that uh, a key component in the uh, eco-industrial park concept or geothermal eco-industrial park concept is the select, how you select the combination of tenants and uh, and obviously it's a it's a huge difference if you have a let's say a, a, a hundred megawatt uh, or 10 megawatt um, uh, geothermal power plant that uh, is, is is supplying electricity to the local tenants uh, at the same time supplying uh, uh, electricity to the grid uh, then Obviously, uh, there are a combination of, of efforts that you can do to provide the, uh, the, the one of the key components. Like I, I've been thinking about the, uh, for example, like data centers that would need 100% uh, availability. They, you, you, you have a, uh, a let's say, a, a, geo, a 10 or 20 megawatts of geothermal electricity being generated then the, the, the data center maybe takes a half a megawatt or a megawatt. And I mean, you can, can easily uh, supply or, 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 or provide uh, the electricity uh, just by, by putting the park into two five megawatt turbines or, 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 or if you have a hundred megawatt, you could have a, a, a three 30 megawatt turbines or, or whatever, just so that you're you're aware that you have to take an outtake, then you can reduce the, the 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 sale of electricity into the grid. But the, I mean, the the, the selling point is that uh, by having an, an independent electricity generation, uh, you are then able to sell uh, a much higher uptime than uh, if you would be selling to the grid and to some local industrial park. Uh, 100 kilometers away. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the, the the grid stability in East Africa is 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 uh, uh, is, is it needs improvement, and 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 therefore there might be a business opportunity to be able to sell 
directly to uh, off-takers within the, the, the park. Uh, Sigurd, would you? Yeah, I think in, in, in Iceland, most of, the, most of the companies within the parks are not only connected to the, the, the exact plant they are closest to, but they are, they are connected to also to, to the grid. So they can be provided energy while, while the, the power plant is out. But of course, you know, geothermal power plants generally have, have very high operational time. And, and with some industries, you can, you can easily plan maintenance stops uh, together with, with companies working with you. Let's say you 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 take one week out of the year for maintenance, and and you can then schedule it, uh, you know, uh, very very long time ahead for for you know, if something unexpected comes up. Another solution would of course be to have have uh, take if you have more than one turbine to take out and go into maintenance for for part of your power plant, and and have half of it still operating, for example. And, and, and at least this is, this is thing we commonly do at last weekend is, 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 you know, half of the power plant is operating while we are, we are working on maintenance for, for, for uh, the other half. Yeah, thank you very much. That's, I know that, I know that was a, a big topic of uh, discussion when we were working on the Osirium project because of, we didn't know whether we needed a connection to the, the local Kenyan grid or or, or what, and I think that's still a discussion that Osirian is still having in, in, in their plans for their industrial park in uh, Kenya. Um, so this next question is from uh, Bill Harvey. Uh, he, he just has a comment to start. He said, this might be the best quantitative laden presentation on parks that he's ever seen. But so he thinks <laughs> that. So he does have one question. Uh, the panelists prefer the term eco-industrial parks or resource part, uh, he just wants to know why. And he said he leans towards one, but he'd just like to know the reasons you guys do that. And I've noticed that too. Uh, I think uh, we at USEA just use the term geothermal industrial parks. That's something that, that we've heard in East Africa too, but I've noticed that you guys use eco industrial parks. So if you just want to talk about that for a little bit, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I prefer the term uh, geothermal eco industrial park because it implies the, the the zero waste uh, concept and also um, an eco-industrial park concept is, is kind of a, a broad, uh, much better known uh, under an eco-industrial park. It is, it is known that the, the, the tenants are sharing some facilities while maybe in Iceland, the geothermal resource park uh, shares a vision, but, but, uh, but they're not sharing um, these common logistics and 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 and, and so forth. So I, I prefer the the term eco industrial park or geothermal eco industrial park. Yeah, I, I agree to that. I think think I think it's important to to adopt maybe well known and 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 well refined uh, uh, what's say term to this so we so. And and we have uh, eco industrial parks are, are something that are being developed all over the world, and much much work is being done on on the theory behind it and how they could put potentially be a, a way out in a way for industry to solve many of their sustainability issues. So I think geothermal to as a as a as a main driver in eco industrial park. I think that's that's. But then we are we are maybe addressing addressing something that is better known than than instead of making up our own own you know yeah <laughs> yeah I, I don't know maybe we're gonna have to all get together and come up with one thing so we make sure that everybody knows we're talking about the same topic so uh, maybe once we get a few of these off the ground we can all agree I I I see both I see everyone's point but uh, uh yeah we just need to get a centralized term. Uh, we do have one more question here uh, from Oscar Sigvaldson. Uh, I think that's another Iceland name, so I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering it. Um, what is the position by the international bank, such as the World Bank, for, per, for providing uh, financing support for industrial parks? I don't know if you guys have had any experience with this or how 
you guys are working on industrial parks or anything like that. So if you guys have any input on that. So um, um, I have uh, been developing or I'm, I'm currently developing a concept of eco-industrial park or geothermal eco-industrial park in Abaya in Ethiopia. Uh, where I have had interest from development organization to come into the feasibility study of uh, assessing what would be kind of the primary uh, focus or, or tenant composition that would be needed for that specific area. Because I think a geothermal eco-industrial park um, has to be, and I think both Sigurd and I mentioned it, it has to be something that is uh, linked to the local knowledge. I mean, um, it's, it's, it's hard to open up and, and produce a dairy product where maybe the culture of not eating dairy products is there. So, so we have to base our, our, our uh, the, the geothermal eco-industrial park has to base its, its uh, foundation on the local resources and then local know-how and, and, and as such, I believe that you know, on the track of, of, of food and, and, and food production, we, we, we should be there. Um, I, I have heard that uh, a certain, uh, that, that the, the financing, for example, from, from US has not been as, mu as much available uh, 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 to Ethiopia uh, lately. But I mean, I'm looking at, at other uh, uh, sources such as uh, other development banks and and uh, the African development banks and grants to to try to to fund some of these studies just so that we we can move forward with this process. Yeah, yeah. We we hope that uh, I think we all hope that we can get uh, more funding for these things, uh, primarily in in Ethiopia and Kenya uh, going forward. So I oh I think we just went over an hour. Um, so. I, I guess I just want to, I think we timed that pretty well. Uh, so we don't have any more questions yet left. So I just want to thank uh, Sigurd and uh, Jan for coming. And uh, I hope you enjoyed learning about this exciting topic from our wonderful speakers. Uh, please be on the lookout for the re for registration for our final webinar in this series. Uh, it should be out in uh, mid-November. We haven't uh, settled on a date yet. And that will be with uh, Mr. Neil Hellings from the Osirian Flower Company. And he will discuss his company's experience in developing a geothermal industrial park in Kenya. So that should be a nice wrap, wrap up to the presentations from our friends in Iceland. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us uh, this morning and this afternoon. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>